Hey guys, it's Carolina here from Carolina's Crafts and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am finishing up making this album and I just have the covers and the spine to finish up. So I thought I would take you guys along and show you guys how I do that with my stitching and everything. So I first took a piece of gold foil paper. This measures a five and three eighths by seven and three eighths. And this is just what works for my size album. Then I cut a piece of um, patterned paper. This is five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And I'm just gonna take a piece of tape, okay? I just put it straight across like on a diagonal. I don't want tape on all the outsides and I'm just gonna stick this down. Okay, so that tape is gonna hold that in place and then we're gonna go stitch around this. This is gonna be my front um, cover uh, piece right here and I'm gonna stick this down onto some gold foil paper as well. Ooh. No, I like this side better. Okay, so I just put a piece down there and I'm gonna stick this down onto my gold. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out, leaving some of that gold border. And then I'm just gonna take my uh, corner puncher, corner chomper, and just chomp away using the quarter inch side because the cut up part is, um, has like that edge there. So that is gonna be my cover, okay? Um, and I will stitch these separately in a second. And then some of you guys also wanted to see how I do my hexagons for the background. And I have all these scraps, so I am going to do some hexagons for the back of my album. So I took another piece of gold foil, 5 and 3 eighths by 7 and 3 eighths. And then I cut a smaller piece, and this one's 5 and a quarter by 7 and a quarter. So this is the same size as the pattern paper that we cut um, before. So I'm going to stick everything down onto this smaller piece of paper. So let me get my um, hexagon punch and we'll do one together. So my hexagon punch comes in a set of three. I'm gonna be using the one and a half. No, you know what? Maybe we wanna use the two inch size. This is really gonna depend on the size of your scrap. So this is the two inch, or this might be two and a half actually. No, this is two inch. Um, but I'm looking at this and I think the one and a half is going to be better um, because my scraps aren't that big. So I'm just going to take off this plastic piece um, and that just helps me punch out my papers. So I'm just going to look through all my scraps here and I'm going to punch a bunch out. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this scrap here, and I don't know which way I wanna cut him out, so I'm gonna cut him out with the little house um, as best that I can. Let me actually cut off a little bit so I could get more of the house. And I could always flip it um, for the other side. Okay, so we got that scrap. We've got this one as well. Um, can't really use the deer from this side. So we're just gonna use um, 
this other side. That's a great way to use up some of these scraps as well. Um, we've got this piece. Um, the doggies. So cute. Oh, these are perfect. Hold on. I can't get this other doggy. A little bit more. So cute. And then I'm just gonna cut out another one and this one we'll just use um, the back side, which is the fa la la. But you still, it's directional, so you still wanna make sure that this is like straight. Okay. So that one's gonna go that way. And look at all these scraps that we are using up, guys. All those little bits and pieces. Um, and like these smaller ones, we could still use for something in a, in a little bit, but let me try to arrange these. See how many I could fit across. Okay, a little less than four. And you know what? I'm just gonna start gluing these down. All right, so now that I have most of this filled in, I still have some pieces like on the side here that I gotta do. Um, but now that I have most of this, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these off because you could actually reuse these. Maybe not so much these ones on the side that are barely hanging off, but the bigger ones you could reuse and stick those down again in a different spot, especially if they're not directional. So I'm just cutting along the edge of that gold foiled paper. Okay, so I have these little pieces that I could go back now and reuse elsewhere. So I'm gonna put this one down here. And see, now I have all these random pieces, so I'm gonna keep doing the same thing and I'm gonna keep cutting them off because I could keep reusing them.
And these pieces that we cut out um, those things from before, you could still reuse these. So for example, here I need a corner piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch this out on the edge so that I could stick this piece down on the corner. Same thing here, I need a corner piece. I'm gonna see if I have anything green, which I do. Um, so again, I'm gonna take this, punch this out on a corner, and I'm gonna stick that down here. So just make sure to use your scraps because they work and <laughs> you could still make some great things with them. Okay, so that is everything. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these all off. Here we go, and now this is ready to be stitched. Um, but you guys know, before I stitched that, I did um, cut out that other gold piece. So let me show you guys that for a second here. So I cut out that other gold piece so that I can still have a gold border layer because these hexagons come up to the very edge of this. Um, so I wanted to make sure it's on another piece of gold so I'm going to put down this piece of tape so I can have that gold border okay and the last thing we need is our spine before we go ahead and um, start stitching everything so let's see what I want for my spine so I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece that measures like 2 and 1 16th by 7 and 3 eighths. And I think this is going to fit. No. What size spine is this? Did I cut that wrong already? Oh. Oh, this is a 2 and a half inch spine. So I need a piece that measures 2 and 5 eighths. by seven and three eighths. Okay, so this should be my spine now. Okay, I'm gonna cut them a little bit shorter. Let's go with two and a half, which is the same height as the spine. Okay. Sometimes you need to cut it a little bit longer um, because it depends on how it folds and everything. So it's two and a half. So I'm going to cut this piece down to two and three eighths by seven and three eighths. No, by seven and a quarter. And that is going to be this piece. And I'm going to go ahead and stick a piece of tape on him as well. Beautiful. So now let's go ahead and stitch everything. All right, guys, here is my sewing machine. And I'm going to have another video linked down below where I show you guys other stuff with stitching and my settings and whatnot. Um, so if you want to click on that, go ahead. I will have it linked down below. But for this one, um, I will also have the uh, gold thread I use linked down below because it's the only one I found that like doesn't really rip. But if you're having trouble with gold thread, you'll probably need to change your tension. So that's mine, one and a half. Um, and I'm good, I have all these different, like different, you know, stitches. So I'm gonna keep mine at zero, zero. And the only piece I'm gonna stitch in that is this. Everything else I'm gonna be cutting, um, or not cutting, but stitching at zero, four. 
So I'm going to keep it as 0, 0, and it's 2.5, I think, separation. I don't really know what those mean, but that's what it is. <laughs> so now let's go ahead and stitch this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and line this up because I just want a straight stitch here. And that didn't do a back stitch, so I'm going to do a back stitch. And this is the curved piece, so I'm going to start curving um, my paper before I go straight. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and lift this up, and here is my first piece. So this is all stitched and all done. You could see I did like the rounded edge here, so that is that one. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the setting of four for my stitches like I just showed you guys before. And I'm going to go ahead and line this up. And now we can go ahead and stitch this, and that did a back stitch, so I don't have to do another one. Okay, so I just did a back stitch at the end there, and then I'm gonna cut this extra off. And then here is my next stitched piece. All right, I'm gonna grab my back cover. Now this one um, has three layers of paper, whereas the other ones had a two, but I'm not changing any settings. It's just gonna stay the same. Okay, so sometimes this happens, but it de-threaded. So I'm gonna go back, I lifted up the thing, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna re-thread um, my machine. So my thread right now is in here. Um, it just kind of broke off. And then I don't know if you guys could see the edge here, but I need to cut that off so it's a nice straight edge so I could thread it again. 
And sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't, and it's fine. I just re-thread it and keep going. So I'm going to cut off this edge and then where I kind of restarted it before, I have those pieces I got to cut off. And that is another beautiful stitched piece of paper. And then I have the last one, which is just my spine. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing. this is done and we've got all of our stitched pieces so we're gonna go back to my desk and see what to do next all right guys so I have everything stitched and ready to go before I do any of that I need to add a ribbon tie closure so I'm just gonna take another piece of tape um, this measures seven and a half so half of seven is three and a half so three and three quarters is my half inch space so I'm gonna put a piece of tape there or like not my half inch, but that's my half mark between um, like this album. So I went ahead and put it down a piece of tape and then I'm gonna put down some ribbon and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this at about 11 inches. And then I'm gonna flip this and do the same on the other side. So I'm going to line up the tape where that other one is. And again, I'm going to cut around the 11 inch mark. Okay. So I have that attached and now I'm going to go ahead and just add some more tape here just to make sure that stays put and doesn't go anywhere. And the same thing on this side. Okay, so let's put this piece aside for a second and we're gonna grab all of our stitched pieces. Now on the backs, I'm gonna flip all these over and I'm actually gonna burnish them. So by burnishing them, it kind of makes the stitching a little bit flatter. 
so that when I go ahead and add my tape, it sticks a little bit better. And a lot of you guys always ask if I like stitch the paper to the chipboard and no, I don't do that. I always stick it down separately. I find, um, especially like on chipboard, if I was to stick this down, well, one, I'd have to do this part first of my album. Um, but two, I find it to get a little messy because then you have tape everywhere, um, especially from like then my ribbon and stuff, and it kind of gunks up my, um, my needle in my machine. So I tend to not um, do that. But I'm going to go ahead and add my tape here. So I'm using, this is a little bit less than half an inch tape. And I go around all the way around on all like the stitched pieces specifically. Okay, and then I usually add one across the center and I will burnish those in, but I'm just gonna get them all done first. I'm even going to do the cut apart too. Alright, so go ahead and burnish all that tape. Alright, so I'm going to do my spine first. This is the right way of the album. Um, spine is just, I don't know, I always do that one first. <laughs> so I'm gonna peel back all my tape. And I'm also, oh, I missed a piece. I'm also gonna be going over it with wet glue as well. So I go over the tape and then I do all the parts I didn't do and over that tape as well in the center. Okay, so now I'm gonna attach this here. And I'm just gonna fold up my album and burnish this. If you could kind of like lay your album flatter, um, you could do that as well. But you wanna burnish it pretty well. Um, so this is my front. Now I'm gonna do the front cover here. And always double check, make sure you know which is your front um, because you don't wanna glue anything upside down. So I'm gonna take this tape off again, get some wet glue on there. And I use uh, Barely Art Glue for everything. I'll have a link down below. And I also have a coupon code for you guys for 10% off if you guys wanna get some. But that's my favorite. And so I'm gonna go ahead and stick this down on the front cover now. And then my cut apart. And obviously this still needs a little bit of decoration, um, but now we could also do my back piece. And at least that's all gonna be ready to go. And all I really need to do to the front is just embellish a little bit, which I will probably add some flowers or maybe some holly or something. Oh, and you also got to take off your tape off the ribbon, if I didn't say that before. OK, 
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuck down. And you guys know I have to add in my handmade logo um, stamp on the back. So it's a stamp that I do on to white cardstock, die cut out, and then I stick it down. So that's just gonna go right there. Where'd my phone folder go? All right. So that is um, the album. And it turned out great. So you guys could check out like the um, inside of the album in the other video. Um, I did just want to show you guys how I attach the front cover today, how I stitch on it, um, and then how I do my hexagon back cover because you guys have been asking. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in my next crafty video. Talk to you soon. Bye.